Hey guys, welcome to my new tutorial and this is going to be a bit of a long one since there's quite a few things to do but in this tutorial I'm going to be showing you how to create this 3D bullet effect that was in my latest Counter-Strike video and if you didn't see it, here's the effect here. Okay, so as you can see it's just a bullet flying towards a guy um, taking a close look at the bullet, there's a bit of motion blur on it, the background's being blurred out as the bullet's further away and it unblurs as it's getting closer. And if you didn't notice, there's a bit of a distortion following the bullet all the way through, which is distorting the image behind it. Even if it is unrealistic, I thought it looked pretty cool, so I'm going to be showing you how to create this exact thing, and you're going to need three programs for it which are Sony Vegas or an editor of your choice, which you use for frag videos. Adobe After Effects and Cinema 4D. Now this effect can be used in any frag video for any game, so Call of Duty, Battlefield, um, Counter-Strike, or you can even use it on real footage that you've filmed um, if you want. So the first thing you're going to want to do is record your footage and then import it into your editor of choice, which in my case is Sony Vegas. So the reason you want to do this first is you want to pretty much sync it up to your music and adjust the speed so it's right before you start messing around with frame rates and different programs. Otherwise you're going to maybe get a slightly laggy footage, something like that. So you can see in this example it's just a camera angle going towards a guy who gets shot and then at the last second it slows down quite a bit. So after you've adjusted the speed, done a bit of velocity and synced it to the music, you want to drag your render region to the part that you want the bullet to be on. You want to make sure your project settings are set to at least 1280 by 720. Then you want to click the render button, uh, select AVI from the drop down menu here. You want to select default template on compressed. You want to go to custom make sure you set to use project settings or you can retype out your settings um, frame rate 29.97 field order none pixel aspect ratio 1 video format uncompressed and you want to go across to your project tab and make sure that's set to best so once you've done that uh, name it and click save and we're done in Sony Vegas so now that we've done that we want to jump over into Cinema 4D now if you don't have Cinema 4D I have supplied this exact footage here with a green background so you can just download that and key out the green if you want it from this angle. If you don't want it from this angle you're going to have to download Cinema 4D yourself and customize a template. Now the template that I used is the one from Video Copilot, the bullet, and I just adjusted the bullet a little bit. I made it quite a bit longer which looks very weird from the side but it looked a bit too squashed from this angle. and um, I've changed a few slight things on the bullet and if we just render out a still frame you can see I've got a bit of a reflection of Aztec here which you can't really notice so it doesn't matter if you're using it for a different effect and there's a green background so it's easy for you to key out. So after you've got the bullet that you want you can make sure it's got a green background by adding a background there and changing the color to green and then you want to go up to your render settings click the save tab uh, make sure it's ticked go format, AVI movie, uh, name it whatever you want and after we've done that click the middle one and render it out. Now I've already rendered mine so I'm not going to override it just to save time. Once we're done in there we're finished in Cinema 4D. Now moving into After Effects I'll create a new project and we want to import both our bullet footage here and then our angle footage of uh, where the bullet's going to be on. So you can see mine's here and if you just drag that footage into there it'll create it to the exact length and frame rate that it's meant to be and then you want to get your bullet clip and drag it over the top and this will be the same as the one in the link in the description okay now that we've imported this we want to get rid of the green now you can use something that's inbuilt into After Effects such as color key which will do a good enough job of getting rid of it so you can up the tolerance add about a uh, edge thinner of one and just feather it out a little bit like that and you know that's not the best key but it's going to do the job since it will have a bit of blurring and uh, movement with it so you're not really going to notice it that much or you can use something like key light which will give you a close to perfect result straight away okay so now that we've done that we can have a look at that but you can see our bullet clip is a bit longer than our in-game clip so to fix this we can just extend our composition to say 5 seconds in our composition settings menu then we can zoom out and once we've done that right click on your bullet layer uh, go to time and enable time remapping 
and you'll see two keyframes popped up and these are pretty much the start and the end point so if you grab the end one and drag it in line with our footage here what that's going to do is it's going to speed up the clip so the end is now there and then we can trim our clip there and then trim our composition back down to there so um, there we go now what we want to do is um, adjust our bullet slightly so it might look a bit big there so you can press S on that layer and scale it down a little bit and also another thing you can do is just go to the end and make sure the bullet kind of lines up with around where the player is just to give that feel of it actually then it's going to hit him um, so there we go now the first thing we're going to do is blurring out the background a little bit so to do this just go to your effects and presets tab again and type blur and I'm going to use a fast blur and just click and drag that onto your background layer. Now you want to make sure that you tick repeat edge pixels so the pixels wrap around and you don't get ugly borders like that. And I'm going to change mine up to about 10 to begin with. And then you want to click the stopwatch next to blurriness and then select our bottom layer and press U. Now what U does is it'll make every keyframe that you're currently adjusting um, expand down to here on your timeline so it's just easier for you and then you want to move forward to however long you want it to be blurry so I'll say just there and then move it down to uh, zero and you can see as it moves closer the blur fades away alright cool okay so now that we've done that we want to add a bit of motion blur to the bullet so to do this I just used a radial blur and I used the CC radial blur However, if you don't have that, you can just use the normal radial blur, which I'll use in this example. Now you want to set spin to zoom, and that's pretty much the effect we're looking for there. So it looks like it has a bit of motion blur, and it's better than just a perfectly in-focus bullet. Okay, so the final thing left to do is add the distortion behind the bullet. So to do this, you want to go Layer, New, Adjustment Layer. You want to drag this in between the two layers and rename it by hitting Enter to just Distortion or something like that, so you know what it is. Now if we go to our effects and presets tab here and type in turbulent displace, you can drag that onto your adjustment layer and you can see the effect it gives right there. Okay, so there's a few options that we can change to improve the look of this. So the amount, uh, you want to bring the size down so it's more compressed and you can up the complexity like that. And that's looking pretty good. Okay, so as you can see that distortion isn't moving whatsoever and something we can do to make it a little bit better is keyframe the evolution up here by clicking the stopwatch and moving forward to the end and changing that value there to 360 degrees. And now if we look at that you can see the distortion is actually animating and it's going to give a little bit better of an effect. Okay, so now we want to just make that distortion just behind the bullet here and nowhere else. So to do this, make sure you've got your distortion layer selected and you want to get your pen tool. And now pretty much what we want to do is just trace around our bullet like so. And what we're doing here is just creating a basic mask. And then you want to go back like that. And we can see the distortion is just behind the bullet now. Now if we select our distortion layer and double tap M, it'll bring up all of our mask properties. And we want to add a little bit of a feather to it so it's not sharp edges on the mask and it gradually fades out. So you can see that's looking pretty good like that. And now if we take a look at the mask, you can see it's not constantly behind the bullet. So to fix this, what we can do is keyframe our mask path and go towards the end here and then just adjust each individual little point so it's still around the bullet like so. We can just create a totally new mask, but just do it the quick way for now. And there we go, if we have a look through there, it sticks pretty much behind the bullet the whole time. And there we go, that's pretty much it. So that's how I created the bullet effect, and if you didn't see the example at the start, here it is again for you. So thanks for watching, I hope this helped anyone who was wondering, and if you have any more tutorial suggestions, just leave it in the comments below or send me a message. And check out my other tutorials and remember to like this video if it helped and subscribe if you want to see more. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.